For today's video, I'm going to show you how we can blend any subject into their background. Let's check it out. Welcome to day number 19 of 30 days of Photoshop, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jason Ortega here with Blended Graphics. And for today's video, we're continuing our theme that we started yesterday of blending subjects into their background. Today's a new composition, and we're going to use the characters from the animated series, How to Train Your Dragon, for today's composition. This will be a two-part tutorial with today's video mainly focusing on the lighting levels and as well as some of the color grading aspects. While tomorrow's video is going to pretty much wrap everything up, we're going to do highlights and shadows to our characters. We're also going to do all of our environmental effects and putting everything through the camera off filter for the touch-ups. So be sure to come back again tomorrow to see how we finish this thing up. If you've been following along with these 30 days of Photoshop and haven't done so yet, please hit that subscribe button and click that bell. It would really help out this channel a lot. Alright guys, let's go ahead and jump right into this tutorial. So here we are with everything together. I'm going to quickly go down the list to see what we're working with. So first we have our three main characters and dragons. We can turn those off and then we have two separate ground layers. We have our foreground and we have our background. So all of these components will get all those adjustments with lighting levels and color grading and we're going to blend all of this together nicely. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer and just go over a couple of things. We have our moon here in the top right corner and we have our sunset. These are going to be our two main lighting sources for this composition. So we're going to keep that in mind throughout this entire process. So like yesterday's video, I'm going to start us out with by adding a black and white adjustment layer to help us gauge our lighting levels throughout our process. And immediately looking at this, you can see our two main characters in the front here actually look pretty decent. Um, our background has a lot of issues with our background layer and that sunset area so the lighting's off with there our dragons in the back are a little off um so we'll make these adjustments as we go along we'll have this layer here for our reference but i'm going to go ahead and first turn this off since we don't need it right now now we can go into our toothless group layer and we're going to add a levels adjustment layer and we can clip it onto that layer and because our light source is from behind most of our characters are going to be a little bit darker so i'm lowering down our brightness levels here Command I to invert the mask and then we're going to switch to a soft round brush tip and we're just going to paint back a lot of this area that's not going to be directly hit by the moonlight or the sunset light from behind. So this is going to give us a good base and foundation to build off of. So we'll continue doing this a little bit. And then let's see a before and after. We'll turn our black and white layer on and we can see the before of how their face and chest is a little bit too bright especially when the light's from behind. And then after our adjustments there, we just darkened it up a bit. So we can turn that off and we're going to jump into our next dragon. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add a levels adjustment and we'll clip it onto that layer. And we're going to darken this guy up just a little bit. We'll close that out. And I'm going to add another a levels adjustment as well. And this one, what I'm going to do after I brighten it up, I'm going to invert the mask by pressing Command I, and then we're just going to paint back a little bit on the edges of the wings. That's probably going to have the more direct light from our sunset. So I'm going to paint that in. Okay, we'll close that out. We'll get into our last dragon and just do a quick reference check. So let's add a levels adjustment layer, and this one needs to get much brighter since he's further into that background and closer to the sunset. So we're going to brighten him up a bit. But we do need to darken up a little bit of this wing. So I'm zoomed in and we're just going to paint away this part of the wing since it's facing the opposite end of where the sunset is. And it's not going to have so much direct light onto it. So that looks really good. And now that we have a good starting off point for our lighting levels for our characters, I'm going to turn them off. And let's focus now on our both our background and our foreground layers. But let's start with our background first. So I'm going to add a levels adjustment. And we're going to increase the contrast a little bit. So let's bring in the shadows and a little bit of the midtones will brighten up. And I'm now going to add an exposure adjustment layer on top of this. And we're going to darken this up just even more so than what it already is. But don't worry. What I'm going to do is now press Command I. We're going to invert this mask. And the areas that's not directly hitting that sunlight, we're going to darken that up. And we're just going to paint white to bring back that 
lower exposure levels. All right, so we're just going to continue to paint along the outer edges of these cliffs. But right now, our foreground and background green levels aren't matching. So I'm going to add a selective color adjustment layer, clip it on there. And in our yellow channel here, I'm going to reduce the magenta. The opposite of magenta is green. So that's why that brightens up the green a bit. And I'm just going to lower the cyan just a tad. I'm now going to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. But first, I'm going to go back into our selective color and just paint black on some of this cliff area because now that's too green for my taste. And I like the warmer tone, so I'm erasing some of that. Okay, that's looking good. All right, so now that we're in our hue and saturation adjustment layer, we're going to go to our yellows and we're going to desaturate that quite a bit because right now it's just too vibrant. Okay, so we have that looking good. Let's close that out. We're going to turn back on our black and white layer. And let's add a levels adjustment layer because now it's too dark in that center. We're going to brighten things up quite a bit. There we go. That looks good. We're going to invert that mask and just paint along some of the edges of these cliffs that we have on the sides. I'm not too worried about the center because our main characters are going to be blocking that. And we'll see that once we turn everything back on again. Okay, let's go into our ground layer and we're going to add an exposure adjustment layer and we're going to darken a lot of this because our characters are going to be blocking a lot of the light. So we're turning our exposure down, command I and we're going to invert the mask and let's paint in front of our characters here that's going to be blocking the main part of our sunlight. We obviously don't want to touch those edges or the back part because that will still be exposed to our sun. And then I'm going to add another exposure layer and we're going to reduce this even more because now we're going to focus on the areas closest to our character's bodies. That's obviously going to have the least amount of sunlight hit there. So we're going to touch that up and darken those areas up quite a bit. So we're going to go around the edges of the tail, the areas of the feet, darken those areas up. And then we can turn back on our black and white adjustment layer. And we can use this again as reference. So now it's looking much more realistic than what it was. And I'll even darken up the edges just a little bit. I don't want it to be too much though because I still want to have that contrast. Okay, let's turn our black and white layer off. And now we can start to shift towards color grading. Um, whenever I do color grading, I like to set my sky first. In this instance, I already have that set. So now we can move on to our background layers. And then we're going to end up last with our characters. So let's shut off our main characters. And now we're going to go into our background layer. And we're going to add a color balance adjustment layer. Color balance adjustment layer is usually my go-to tool to get things going just because I think it's really easy to match tones within this specific adjustment layer. And for our specific image, we're actually going to add a second color balance adjustment layer because we're going to work with two tones. We're going to have the warmer tones in the center from the sunset. And then on the edges, they're going to be much cooler from the top part of our sky. And that's not going to be directly hit from the sunset. So let's now add our second one and we're going to clip it on there. And for this top one, we're going to call this one the outer. And the one below it will be our inner parts that's going to be the warmer tones. So starting off with the inner one, we're just going to move these anchors to the reds, yellows, magentas, between our mid-tones, highlights, and shadows. And we're going to warm that up quite a bit. We can always reduce the opacity. I know it looks pretty extreme right now, but no need for panic. So we've reduced the opacity. Command-I to invert that. And we're just going to paint back in the center area. We're going to stay away from the, the edges of our cliffs and we're just going to focus on our main valley and the inner parts. Okay, so now that we're in the top one, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to shift towards the cyans, blues, maybe a little bit of the green. And we're just going to repeat the same exact process. Once we have that, we're going to command I to invert the mask and then paint back in those extremely outer edges of our picture. So just a little bit more to go. We'll wrap this up. Let's reduce the opacity on that. And then I want to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And we're going to drag that up to the top. And then I'm just going to play around with the saturation a little bit. I think that's a bit <laughs> too extreme. Let's bring this back. That looks good. And now we can work with our ground layer. And we're going to do the same thing, adding a color balance adjustment layer because it's not directly hitting the light from the sunset so much. I want to use the cooler tones for our ground layer. So that's what I'm doing with this. We're just shifting towards the blues and cyans, even introducing a little bit of the magenta as well. And as we wrap this up, what we're actually going to do 
Um, this time we're going to paint black on our layer mask and we're just going to paint away some of those cooler tones on the areas behind our characters because that will still get the light from our sun in the background. And we want to enhance that a little bit more. So we're adding another color balance layer, just like what we did with our cliffs. And this time we're going to shift towards the warmer tones. So that way we can go back to the area behind our characters and warm some of that up a bit. All right, so we inverted our mask and now we're going to paint back in, like I said, the, the areas behind our characters. That's going to get that light from the sun. All right, now let's take a quick before and after look to see what that adjustment looks like. Really nice. All right, and now at this point, I think we're in a pretty good spot for our background and our ground layers. And let's now shift towards our characters and start doing some color grading on them. And you've probably guessed it. We're going back to our color balance tool, my favorite tool. And we're gonna use those cooler tones just like the ground because it's not getting hit from the sun directly. And we're facing the opposite side. And color grading is actually my favorite part doing any composition because this is when you start to see everything tied together really nicely and looks cohesive. We'll do a quick before and after of what that looks like. And then we can reduce the opacity quite a bit so it's not too overbearing. And we're going to actually visit back to our background layer because I'm not really liking how it's looking. I'm going to add a solid color adjustment layer. And let's hit OK. We're going to clip it onto that below. And let's sample one of these cyan colors. We're going to press OK. We're going to reduce the opacity. And then after we do this, we're going to do the same thing with the orangish red tones as well. I want to give it some of that atmospheric haze to help enforce and enhance the um, realism of depth of field. And I definitely like this look much better than what it was before. To me, it looks a lot more realistic. In general, the further things away, you are going to have that interaction with light and the, the haze look in general, and it's not going to be so clear. So this looks better. We're going to add another solid color and we're going to do the darker tones and we're the same thing. We're just going to go on the edges of the cliffs and we're just going to paint some of that back in. So let's find a good one to work with. Hit OK. We'll reduce the opacity. Maybe we'll change up the color again just a little bit. We inverted the mask and we're going to paint back those outer edges just to really emphasize and create that contrast. Okay, so now that our valley's looking much better, we're gonna go back to our characters and we're gonna bring in our left dragon. This time, instead of using the color balance adjustment layer, we're gonna use the solid color layers that we had on our background. And we're just gonna hold Alt or Option and drag up a copy of both that darkish blue tone as well as the, the reddish tone. And I filled that layer mask with white and I just reduced the opacity. Now we're bringing in the pink tone. And let's make sure this layer mask is completely white as well. And starting with this tone, let's command I invert that mask. We're going to zoom in here. And now let's paint back some of that pink color in on the edges below our dragon and kind of on the edges of our wings. I can see we have that halo fringe. So I've double clicked on our layer and we're going to blend if and just removing some of this highlights from our character to remove that fringe from the wings. And we can hit OK. We can go back to our black and white layer, do a quick reference check. Looks good. And you know what? I don't want this dragon to feel left out from using a color balance adjustment layer. So we're going to add one onto this guy as well. We'll clip it below and we're just going to move these angers to where I feel like fits best with our character. And this is looking really nice. I'm telling you, I really love using this color balance adjustment layer. I just think it's so easy to use and it's so effective. It's looking great. And we can see a before and after. Nice adjustments will reduce the opacity just a little bit. And we're going to do the same thing with our right dragon. But because our right dragon is further into the distance and closer to the sunset, we're only really going to use this pink tone. And we're going to adjust the opacity to where we want it. And I think I'm going to change up this color just a little bit. There we go. And we can erase some of that on the wings so it's not too overbearing on this character, even a little bit on the top of the dragon's body and head. And just because I know you're not tired of seeing it, Let's add a color balance on this guy. Why not? Let's give them all some of this. We're going to introduce those cooler tones and we're going to put this on some of the wings. Just the area that, like I said, is not going to be directly hitting the sunset light. All right, let's close that. Let's see a before and after. And then we can reduce the opacity just a little bit as well. And why not? Let's throw another one of these on top of that. And again, let's 
exaggerate more some of these cooler tones that we're going to put on the wing. The wing that's at least closest away from the sun, that is. Okay, so let's go through all of these categories here. Close that out. Command I to invert the mask, and we're going to paint back in this wing area. All right, and this is where I'm going to leave things for today's video. We can pick things up again tomorrow. I got through what I wanted to get through, which is just the lighting and the color grading. As I mentioned earlier on in this video, that tomorrow we're going to do the rest of it, which is going to be the highlights and shadows, as well as doing some of those final effects and camera raw filter. But before I leave you, let's reference back to what our original image looked like before we made all these adjustments today. So this is the start of it. Looks pretty boring. Definitely a lot that needed to get done. And here we are with the final touches. We're at a great point to finish things up tomorrow. And I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope I've given you some insight that you can use in your own personal workflow or something new at least than what you're used to doing. If you have any questions about my process or want me to further elaborate on anything specifically, please reach out to me in that comment section. Other than that, thank you so much for dropping by. I hope that you come back again tomorrow as we wrap up not only this picture, but our little mini series where we are blending our subjects into their background. Thank you so much, guys. Take care.